Welcome to Superior Profit Weekly Market Roundup, 18th March, 2017. I am Sagan Nandi, the Chief Analyst and Trader of Superior Profit. Before going through today's session, let's go through the standard disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It, it is designed to share information on superior profits trading system. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. Superior profit is not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. As usual, we will look at few key markets, including oil, gold, Nifty, index for India and Sing dollar. Then we will go to US market and look at the three broad market ETFs, SPY, QQQ, DIA, before going into broad market sector and industry analysis and ranking. Then we will go through some of the recent posts in Trade Ideas, Quiz Playground and Graduates Club. And we will be happy to look at potential trades for upcoming week, as well as any of the stocks that you want us to analyze together. You may ask questions throughout the session using the Q&A panel. I will keep an eye on that and keep on answering the questions as we go along. Let's go straight to the platform and look at the few key markets. Let's look at USO first. USO is the oil ETF. It was going sideways for a long time, both in daily and weekly chart. And then it dropped heavily. In last week's session, we mentioned that if it comes to this memory line, that might be a good point to try to take an entry into oil. If we see the daily chart, as well as the weekly chart. We can see that price came very close to the memory support line, but didn't exactly hit it. So we didn't have any bounce trade opportunity. Price did reverse with heavy activity on this red candle. However, all the requirements of bounce trade were not fulfilled. Namely, the close of the candle was not above the previous candles close. We could have taken a trade on an intraday basis the very next day as a day trade. However, there was no swing trade setup in oil. The memory trend lines act as very rigid support. So when price is coming to that level, and in this case, it happened both in weekly and daily chart, an alert day trader could have caught even the bottom of this candle. But for swing trader, there was no clear setup in oil. If price now comes back again to this memory line, and even better, if it penetrates it and then goes up, 
that might give a low risk entry point for oil at that point. Let's look at gold. We are using the GLD, gold ETF. Our bullish call on gold was negated on one of these candles as it broke below the low of the last low and then price came right from the upper boundary to the lower boundary. We call this formation wild swing and therefore the trend is not clear anymore because it went to a higher high and then from there it came to a lower low. So it neither has higher high higher low nor does it has lower high lower low at this point. So we have no clear trend identified. So we will not be able to take any go with flow long trade for swing trading. It didn't have in the recent last few days any headwind signal. So there will not be possibility of any headwind reversal trade. Neither did it bounce from a long standing support. So we wouldn't have box trade opportunity as well. So there is no bounce box headwind or go with flow trade opportunity in the last week or so. If now gold tilts down in the last in the next few days and the candle color turns magenta then it might give a go with flow short entry opportunity where price will be bouncing down right from the slow direction line In the last few days, if we look, then we see that on this candle, it was a huge candle with very high activity. This was the day where the Fed's central, uh, Fed's interest rate decision was made. Market went up as did GLD on that day, but just like market didn't continue to go up, the same thing happened in gold as well. Next day, after the big rally, it opened with a gap up, but closed the day at the low of the, at the lowest price, almost at the lowest price. And next day, Friday, was a bearish shaped candle, which was also an inside candle of Thursday's move. So if it moves down, it might give a go with flow short trading opportunity. We wouldn't like to buy gold at this point because there is no clear uptrend available anymore. Rather, it looks like there is higher possibility of gold going down than going up. However, we will wait for the proper signal before entering any trade. Let's now move to meta stock and look at some of the world markets. Start with Nifty. Which is the India market, broad market uh, future. I wrongly typed the symbol. It should be capital N Y N I F then small C one. We have been uh, watching Nifty along with US oil gold for some time. Our last 
good entry point was long time ago a bound straight setup at this point somewhere in december and since then it is going up we were looking for a bound straight or a reversal trade at the watermark level but we couldn't take the trade because of the support memory line and that was a good decision because price went up again also for those who are following the india market there was an election in some of the states in india so a disciplined trader would not like to take a new swing trade position just before the election result was out so after election it seems that market went up but two on two of the days where it tried to go up on this day as well as on friday price gapped up but throughout the day it seemed it seems from this daily chart throughout the day price actually slowly went down though on a closing basis price went up now it is already above upper boundary so we are not going to look for any swing long position instead if it goes down then we will see if there is a reversal trade if the reversal trade opportunity doesn't come another possibility could be that the price comes back to value area and tilts back up giving us a low risk go with flow trend following long opportunity of course on a long term basis nifty is clearly bullish so if we are looking for general stocks to trade in india market we'll try to align on the long direction provided all the conditions of one of the superior profit trade setups are met let's look at sing dollar and we will look at australian dollar also so oh, enamul asked for that let's look at sing dollar first for sing dollar our last short entry that we discussed during the classes was on this day and profit target would have been booked at the slow direction line the white line or even before that once the risk distance was covered so the stop would have been somewhere just above the recent high entry price would have been at the close of this magenta candle and once the risk distance was covered probably looking at the watermark low level partial profit could be booked there and then stop placed in a way that the whole trade is risk free from then on last week we had looked at this magenta candle and we saw that most of the go with flow short conditions were met however the weekly candle using backdrop template was yellow so all the conditions were not met now if somebody is watching an instrument regularly then he or she tends to have a feeling for the instrument in that case it may be possible to adjust the rules a little bit however in the beginning i suggest all q traders to stick to the trade setups that are mentioned in the checklist the trade setups with, with the full checklist conditions to be made before taking any trade here we see sing dollar continued to fall meaning sing dollar is actually becoming stronger relative to us dollar at the right edge price is at memory support and also at a watermark low level it has a bull release signal also if price goes up on monday then it might give a low risk long entry point on this instrument because this will be a reversal trade 
we would like to if, if it does go up and it gives an entry opportunity we would like to put stop just below the watermark low level which is also below the memory support line entry will be sometime around here someplace around here and as soon as the risk distance is covered it will be good to book some profit and let profit run with a stop loss set in a way that the entire trade is risk free from then onward right now at the right edge of the chart there is no trade on sing dollar Let's look at Aussie dollar. Good, very good pick enamel. Good, thank you. Now Aussie dollar, we don't check regularly, but it is an interesting chart that memory trend lines are very powerful lines, which can come from few days back to few years back, all drawn automatically using very strategic anchor points. And we see that so far, every time price came to that level, it halted and some time dropped significantly. The last drop was of course, smaller than the previous drop, which happened around November last year. But it is possible that some of the sellers are still there who would like to sell at this price at the memory trend line. So if it does tilt down, then it might give a low risk entry point. Again, following our reversal straight strategy, we will put stop just above the memory line, which also has a watermark high level. Entry point will be somewhere along this level and we would like to book profit quickly if price goes down as soon as the risk distance is covered. Now in forex trading, the bound setup is slightly different in terms of checking the activity or volume level for stocks or futures. We have a requirement, one of the checklist requirements for bound trade is to have heavy activity. And for box trade also, we like to have heavy activity. However, for Forex instruments, the volume data is not reliably available from any single platform. Metastock has, in my view, one of the most reliable data, but it is still not comparable to the reliability of stock or future volume or activity data. So, that checklist condition of having very high activity before taking a bounce trade for Forex is not applicable. Because there is not a single exchange where all the Forex is being traded and therefore no provider, no data provider can give the full picture of volume or activity for Forex pairs. Now, if it doesn't reverse back, then we would not like, like to take any long position in Australian dollar right now for swing trade. We are not breakout traders. So if it does break out, we would like it to come down and then tilt up, giving a very low risk trend following long entry opportunity. We will not like to enter a long if price goes above and breaks the memory line on Monday or Tuesday. We will wait for it to pull back again. That was a review of gold, oil, nifty, sing dollar and Australian dollar. Let's now move to US market and look at the broad market ETFs.
we can use trade station for that let's look at spy now i posted uh, one topic short topic in trade ideas mentioning that all the so-called big news of non-farm payroll or even interest rate didn't actually change any direction of the broad market so just by looking at this range bound move we see that since the last headwind bearish headwind came and we remember that the bearish headwind appeared in all the three etfs on the same day price has not been able to bridge the watermark high level instead it had moved sideways and the last candle flow color has turned bearish there is no very high activity or extreme high but high activity is there high activity is indicated by a thick line if we look at the weekly chart that is now bearish both in terms of shape as well as backdrop color being bearish that is magenta so if this is the condition of the market it is not in our way superior profit way not the right time to look for long trades and probably we are not entering long trade for quite a while even in the up move because the internals were weak and price quickly went above upper boundary after breaking out of narrow range at this point before breaking out it was moving sideways for quite a long time and it was not possible to take any trend following long trend one could have tried a trade sideways trade that is a box trade in a candle like this how far uh, this was not a safe trade to take so we wouldn't have taken this trade unless somebody was trying a day trade based on completion of this candle we will not take swing trade because this candle itself was undecisive having both upper tail and lower tail but a day trader could have used the information that price came back inside narrow range with a bull release the plus symbol here in trade station indicates the bull release and he or she could have entered a day trade at this point however other than that there was no easy swing trade trend following long opportunity along the way and now it seems to be tilting down so we may look for short opportunities let's also look at the other two etfs Dow Jones Industrial Average, DIA. Here the pattern is similar to that of SPY. There was a bearish headwind and even though there were so many apparently vital news of non farm payroll and even interest rate decision price hardly moved that is why in superior profit way we like to trust our eyes and not go by the so called expert commentators that market is actually going up or going down it is going nowhere as we can see ourselves in the weekly chart it has an indecisive indecisive candle backdrop color is bearish but it has both upper tail and lower tail and for the last 3 weeks price is moving in very narrow range so there is no decisive direction in dia spy was actually more bearish than dia as of friday's close let's look at qqq q 
QQQ had been the strongest among the three broad market ETFs and it continues to be so as of last Friday. In the daily chart, this is the only instrument that slightly went up last week and broke out of the last bearish headwinds high but then tilted back down with a bear release thereby actually making what we call a fake upside breakout it probably didn't close below the watermark level but if the current move slide down move continues probably on monday open or around that there is a chance it will create a fake upside breakout and therefore give a very low risk short opportunity in terms of day trading if we look at the swing trade checklist for the superior profit setups we will see none of the trade setups are made so we will not like to short qqq at this point however a day trader may take a shot on monday using one of the day trade rules that is early range breakout or stretch release we also note that the support level is nearby in terms of memory support that is another reason we would not like to take a swing trade shot at this point Now let us move to broad market analysis and sector and industry analysis. In terms of broad market analysis, we look at the NASDAQ index on the left hand side, composite index, and the NYSE composite index on the right hand side, both using weekly chart. The broad market indices are bullish as they have been for quite long time, and NASDAQ broad market index is actually overt stretched shown by these green dots on top of the candle for eighth straight week however if we look at the last few weeks then clearly it is not moving much similar to what we see in the broad market etfs however if we have to say what is the trend of the broad market indices they are clearly bullish the internals are not reflecting that and we are mentioning that for many weeks now the internals that is the top new high low advanced decline and up down volume they have not been able to surpass the last high that was made when the broad market was going up so the internals are not keeping up with the broad market up move however that is again not enough reason for us to start shorting we finally can make money only by trading the instrument not by the internals so there is no short opportunity in the broad market indices neither it is there on the broad market etfs if we look specifically at last two weeks move of the internals we see that out of the six internals three of them increased and three of them decreased 
the circle ones decreased for the last week and the rectangles ones went up and two of them which is the up down volume actually turned negative both for nasdaq and nysc so though NAS nysc went up nasdaq also went up in terms of the last week's candle itself we can see that the volume of stocks moving down was actually higher than volume of stocks moving up in both the indices so we conclude that the internals continue to be weak the last week's view was neutral however of course the broad markets continue to be quite strongly bullish let's now move on to sector analysis we look at the 10 sectors 10 broad market sectors every week in terms of three different time frames the last five days which is this red candle red bar five days prior to that this is the week that just finished the blue bar is five days prior to that and green bar is for 10 days prior to the blue bar so together they comprise 20 days move or about one month move we noted that non-cyclical consumer goods and services is the only sector that is positive in all the three review periods others always moved from in this case of healthcare positive to negative to positive again for financial positive to negative to positive again energy positive negative positive same for industrials technology positive positive negative and similarly for all the other sectors last week basic basic materials is the best performer with 1.8 percent gain and this was reflected in the industry performers also where we will see several metal mining related industries did well last week now we have been seeing this flip-flop of market not going anywhere or industry is not going anywhere one week going up another week going down that is clear in this sector performance in this week also every every sector other than non-cyclical consumer goods have flip-flop from either positive to negative or negative to positive in the last three review periods if you now move to the best performing industries then we see that four industry groups went up by 5% plus last week. That is gambling, iron and steel, consumer electronics, and industrial metal and mining. As I mentioned, the strength in basic material sector is reflected in the strength of industries, metal mining, industry group, iron, steel, and basic resources. But as I mentioned, these industries are one week going up, another week going down. It's not uh, easy to detect any trend at the industry level. However, at the stock level, there might be swing trading opportunities. Last week, we observed such opportunity was there in Elqua. You might look for trading opportunities in these industry sectors for swing trading.
if we go to the five days worst performing industry groups, we see there is some similarity. There are three related to transportation, that is airline, railroads, and trucking. Interestingly, all the three modes of transportation, industry groups related to that decline, and two related to biotech, pharma and biotech, and biotech, they declined as well, and two related to insurance, reinsurance and full line insurance. So if we are looking for short, we would probably try to get stocks in these industry groups. And if we are looking for long, probably we will be looking for going long in one of these top best performing industry groups. By doing that, we'll be using not only technical analysis, but combine broad market sector industry analysis with technical analysis. Moving forward, we also look at the best rank improving and declining industries. And here we have more pattern emerging of similar industries moving together. We can see that five of the top rank improvers are in rate, real estate investment trust, or real estate. So there is a retail rate, diversified rate, industrial office and rate, real estate investment trust, real estate. Five of them are related to rate and real estate, and four are related to metal mining. The non ferrous metal, basic resources, industrial metal mining, and aluminium. So again, the pattern that was clear in sector is clear in the best rank improving industries and also the best performing industries. We can see some of the rank improvements were very radical. Like retail rate, from 150 rank out of 160, it came to close to 18 or 19. Same for diversified rate, which was close to 150, then it came to about 20. Industrial rate, the same thing. From about 140, it came to about 20 rank. So it may be good idea to look for possible swing trade opportunities long in these industry groups. Of course, finally, the actual chart has to give us a proper trade setup before, before we take a trade. And if some of these industry groups are flip-flopping, then mostly it will show up as stopping at a support level or resistance level and there will not be any trend following go through long opportunity. Instead, for flip-flopping industries on the chart, you might get reversing box or bounce opportunities. And sometimes if there is no swing trade opportunity, you may look at the candle pattern and take a day trade opportunity. That is only if you are already taking day trades. Moving to the industries with biggest rank declines, there is no clear pattern here as was in the biggest rank improvers. Toys declined a lot. Somewhere from 120 rank to Sorry, somewhere from almost 10 rank, the, the arrow direction should be opposite. Somewhere from near 10 to 120. But if we look at the top 10 rank decliners, there is no clear pattern. So if there is a clearer pattern, then we are more happy to take a trade in those industry groups, 
like metal mining related industries in this case for gainers or rate. So that was a review of few commodities, some global markets and USA market in terms of ETFs as well as internals and sector and industry analysis. Let's now go through some of the recent topics posted in the community. By the way, are you all comfortable? You know how to use the community, how to navigate, etc. I have discussed it from time to time, but recently some people reached out to me asking how to do this or how to do that. So I was wondering if you all are actually aware of how to navigate through the community. Could you answer in the Q&A? Okay, yes, majority says yes, fine. Then I will not go through that again, at least not in today's session. Let's go through some of the community posts. Now let's look at the uh, stock chart, JPM. And this is a question if we look at this chart as of close of Friday, is there, is, a, is there a trade setup that you are willing to take? What is the name of the trade setup and what is the direction? Please type your answer in the Q&A. The question is, do you see a superior profit trade setup on this stock of JP Morgan? And if you see, what is that trade setup? Type your answer in the Q&A so I can continue from there. Yes, I, I see Binoy saying headwind and bear release followed by magenta candle and go with flow short. Okay, great. Yes. So I also thought so. If we look at this chart, it looks quite bearish to me, which is at pendulum high. Pendulum high means it has been at a very high level, which is shown by the headwind and also the bear release coming in magenta color instead of red. Since the bearish headwind came, I think about two weeks ago, price couldn't go up. Instead, it gradually moved and on Friday, it broke below the support memory line with heavy activity. So at least on the daily chart, the candle pattern activity breaking up the memory and the fact that bearish headwind was earlier there and now there is a flow color bearish magenta the last candle it seems that this stock is bearish and on top of that the relative performance line is declining for quite some time and it did the same again on friday showing that it is underperforming the broad market on the weekly chart the backdrop candle is bearish magenta and the shape is also very bearish. So based on this analysis and the, that the fact that if you are observing US market, many stocks in financial industries and sectors were showing bearish sign, I decided to post a go with flow short idea for JPM. 
so it was based not only on the stock chart stock chart itself is bearish enough for me to take a very low risk short trade and i posted the snapshot just before market close the stop will be just above this last friday candle but i observe using sonar and this is the sonar on trade station but the same result would have been obtained from metastock sonar if you see there are list of financial stocks on the left hand side bank of america morgan stanley bk bk is which stock we have to check up us bank of bmy sti city bank jp morgan goldman sachs all of them had a flow color bearish actually meeting many of the go with flow long opportunities so it took me only few minutes to see that so many financials were bearish with go with flow potential q go with flow short entry and then i had plotted it or plotted them one by one on at a glance and decided to choose jp morgan to be one of the potential shorts and i posted it in the trade ideas the trade ideas forum is open to public now you may go through the other banks and you will see several of them are bearish for swing trade and they are at very high point so probably several of you or at least some of you have a long position in the financial stocks it may be good idea to book some profit if profit has not been booked or at least put a trailing stop to protect the profit now let me show you the chart of which one bank of america also and then ask whether you see any trade opportunity there clicking mouse and going to trade station bsc again the same question do you see any trade opportunity there and if so which direction you may use the qna box to answer the more you participate the more confidence you will have in real life market when you see a similar chart yes this is also a potential go with flow or short and again because multiple stocks in the same industry group were showing weakness i uh, we would have been more confident to take the trade interestingly the bearish headwind on bank of america i checked before i posted happened on the exact same day that it happened on jpm also here also the weekly candle is quite bearish both in terms of shape and also backdrop color daily couldn't go up above the headwind price for many days so if somebody had traded a short vertical bearish trade that is short call vertical when the headwind came both in bsc and in jpm they would have made good profit by this about 2x move since then on the right hand side the flow color turned bearish there is no extreme high activity but high activity is there and relative performance is tilting down for quite some time which tilted down again on friday that is the white dotted line here so i posted bsc also as a short potential trade idea in the subscription based forum however those of you who have the platform they don't need to subscribe at all every analysis that i do and post charts there or stocks there you may do it yourself easily using the q trading system
this is the trade idea on BSE that I posted at the same time that I posted JPM again based on the fact that multiple banks were showing BRE sign and the snapshot of Bank of America as of that point. If we take this short trade, we have a very nice point to put stop loss just above the watermark high and also above the memory support line. And you can see some of the posts posted by MindZap, who is Binoy, is showing up in bold case. That means I haven't been able to open it yet. Let's open it. Okay, probably it was posted earlier. This is a follow up. So Binoy posted it when price broke out of the memory resistance. It was moving sideways for a while inside triangle pattern. On the last day, it broke with very high activity. Personally, I had mentioned that I would not like to take a trade because the weekly, again, because of sideways move, was with yellow, that is neutral backdrop color. But of course, uh, if somebody is tracking a stock regularly, as I said, he or she would tend to have a feeling for the stock. So, Binoy might have used that feeling that is okay. And the stop would be just below the memory resistance and one could try to book profit once the risk distance is covered or at the upper boundary line. So though I would not have taken the trade looking at the weekly backdrop and the fact that I am not tracking Indian stocks as regularly as I do US stocks, but Binoy is doing quite well. Let's go back to the latest post again. It went up, probably it gave enough move to cover the risk distance. Now it tilted down on Friday. So if it comes back to the watermark level and tilts up at that point, I will be more comfortable taking the trade. Also looking at broad market in India. And I hope by that time, the weekly backdrop will remain cyan. And then if I have a cyan candle around this watermark high level, that will be a proper go with flow long trade setup. Of course, we need to keep an eye on the India broad market as well. It is also at pendulum high right now. So before taking any long trade, we will be careful. And if we are taking a long trade in Bata, which is a shoe manufacturer, probably we would like to look at some of its peers and see whether only Bata is trying to go up or are there companies in the same industry that are also trying to go up. If multiple stocks in same industry are going up together, then we will like to take a trade more confidently in, in that. That's the superior profit way because we also add the age of industry to our trade, not just the stocks technical analysis.
I had posted a quiz earlier on GE and let us go through that. Okay, th there is a question, I'll come back to that. Let's go to the quiz. I had posted a quiz based on General Electric, GE. When I posted the chart looked like that and the question was, will we take a trade? Now, or, or, or there are there indicators to take, tell us, indicators telling us to take a long trade. The answer was yes, indicators were telling us to take a long. However, none of the trade setups were fully made. So we may watch it, but we don't have taken any long trade. But why I post the quiz like this is to be alert of all the indicators. When we take the trade, we look at individual indicators and then combine them together. If by combining them, we don't get a proper setup based on our checklist, we may not take the trade or we might take a day trade or we might take a trade only if we are following that stock regularly and we have a feeling. But it's always good to study. It's like that studying the trees as well as studying the forest. When I posted the quiz on that day, after a reasonable move down, of GE and hitting exactly the memory support, both in weekly and daily. The daily candle had gone up sharply. Not only did it go up from the support memory, it had broken the resistance memory. That is, it broke out of the triangle pattern with very high activity and weekly also had support at that time and relative performance had tilted up. So there were many signs that would encourage us to take a long trade. However, we'll not take it because one of the things we look at is how far is the possible move. And we notice that the yellow declining direction line was right at the closing price. Any declining direction line, be it yellow or white, they can act as resistance. So we do, don't like to take a long trade when price closes just below that. That was the reason that though there were many conditions, positive for, for positive conditions for going long, we wouldn't take a trade on GE right at this point. Now there was a question, what are these dots? This is the movement indicator in the middle panel. It has three components. The top one is acceleration, then speed and momentum. They show us how the stock is moving up down. Red in our charts, red or magenta, they represent bearish or lower side and green cyan represents bullish or on the higher side. So we have the movement indicator both in weekly and daily. And some of those calculations are included in the flow calculation. For example, on this day, this magenta flow candle, if we look down, we'll probably find, not probably, we'll find all the three movement components bearish or red. So when the flow color turns magenta, it includes several calculations and tries to show where a potential short opportunity may come in. So every time we don't look at the middle band when talking about a trade opportunity, but the checklist for each of the trade setups inherently already combine these indicators. Why we still have it on the chart is if we have three, four stocks like JPM and Bank of America, both financials, both potential short candidate this week, and we want to take only one short in one industry, then we would like to look at them side by side and decide which one to trade. So let's do that now. 
let's go back to trade station and try to look at two different companies BAC and JPM side by side using daily hop on template and now by looking at the two it should be JPM. By looking at the two side by side charts, you can now tell, let's ask that question again. If we had to take short in only one of them, which one will you short? Please type your answer. It's just very objective decision based on the indicators, not a subjective decision. If you had to short only one which one will you short or if is there a tie meaning you are you are ambivalent you would short any of them please type your answer in the chat there is some answer let me look it up enamul says jpm and binoy says also jpm because bsc is showing oversold and and anonymous says i will short the stock which has all three red actually both the stocks have all three red as of friday but Binoy, Binoy uh, has a very good point. Binoy has a very good point. And that is why sometimes I like to pose quizzes, even if there is no trade setup. We need to get used to read each the indicator very quickly based on color coding. And Binoy correctly noted that it is already overstretched or oversold BSE. Not probably in terms of dollar move, but everything is relative so we just need to look at in the past how narrow range it was moving into and then how much it moved down and now making it oversold the other factor to see is that in terms of activity BAC had high activity but not extreme or very high bearish activity which is indicated by this green dot and JPM also broke the memory support. BAC didn't break anything yet, but it is already overstretched. BAC might have already broken some memory some days ago. Now, if we just look at the movement indicator, then I, my view is both are, both are red in terms of acceleration and then movement for a while. And the momentum, the last one, includes volume also in its calculation. It is switching between red and green. So looking at the overall picture, just looking at movement, I think my, my view is same on both the stocks. But if we look at the activity, then JPM is a weaker stock because it fell down with very high activity. And as Binoy rightly mentioned, BAC also already oversold. So that is also not as good as in case of JPM, which is not oversold yet. So these are fine points though. Overall, I think that one could have shorted both, but, but uh, if we had to choose only one, then we will choose JPM. So sometimes I do this kind of analysis if I want to short only one in an industry group. By looking at them side by side is using the hop on template.
and there is a comment that uh, we could also choose is based on how much potential it has to go down compared to the other so we will like to do that in terms of reward risk ratio not just how much it can go down but what is the reward risk ratio so if we move to the hop off template for both the stocks then we will be able to decide where is the stop loss position now in case of bank of america the stop loss will be just above the memory support line which is also indicated by the q protection signal and for jpm it will be all at the q protection line target for jpm will be at the ascending yellow line lower boundary and we can see it is the same for bse if we calculate the reward risk ratio it will probably be more or less same we don't need to actually use calculator we don't do that i don't do it in superior profit way i just look at it visually and i i think in terms of reward risk ratio both are more or less same to my eyes of course i didn't look up any fundamental data and for swing trading the fundamental data is not that important because on average a superior profit swing trading exits within 5 days we may just see if an earnings date is there or not if not then for swing trading uh, it is not that relevant to look up fundamental data but for long term investment we would like to only buy and hold robust stocks there is a question can we know which one will go down more nobody at least i don't cannot predict the future so i don't know which one will go down more but all i can see from the chart is what it tells me where are the potential support points and that will be the ascending yellow line in both of both of them so if i am a swing trader i will try to book profit at these points and another point to make is that as days pass by the yellow line will move up so sometimes i may post a trade idea saying this is my target but in 1 2 3 days the target will slightly move up and probably finally the exit may be at this point similarly for bsc target is the ascending yellow line and upper boundary but both of them are going up so the actual exit point may not be this price level i mean not this price level but slightly higher sometimes it is also good to look at side by side using backdrop candle backdrop chart if daily is inconclusive and we might choose either one of them then there is no harm by just few clicks and not sure if my registration is giving up by the way in the last week session yes registration needs more bandwidth etc but let me spend few more minutes on these two stocks let's look at both of them in meta stock using weekly backdrop template one is bsc and this is exactly how i choose stocks i run sonar in this case multiple financial stocks were bearish so i looked at all of them and i found bsc and jpm to be most interesting so i shared both of them in different forums 
but if we had to choose one we saw daily in terms of daily chart there there is more more or less a tie though though there are few points in favor of uh, jpm right which one was that hmm. which one was that let's see which one was stretched sometime i forget sorry You know, sometimes I'm funny. I could just scroll up the QA and see Binoy's answer. JPM. I will short JPM because BAC is showing over. So, yeah, so JPM. So, more or less type, but JPM is slightly more bearish in terms of daily chart. But let's go back again to the weekly side by side. One is BAC, one is JPM. Let's change the symbol. And now I ask you the question again, if you look at these two charts, which one is more bearish to you? Or is there a tie? The more you ask questions, everybody, it is my pleasure. And uh, trust me, the more I ask also, it will be good practice for you. Because we are looking at right edge of the chart. I always tell, that sometimes other people show middle of the chart that is of not much use in real life trading. JPM, JPM, okay. Multiple people are saying JPM, yes, yes. And that is beautiful, you know. We have to look at the overall chart, but we finally take, especially swing trade, based on few days move. And here on the weekly chart, JPM is bearish uh, backdrop color for two successive weeks. The bear release came one week earlier, whereas for Bank of America, only one week is bearish and bear release has come in the current week. So I mentioned in day trading also, if we are trying to day trade broad market ETF, one of QQQ, SPY dia, we like to short the weakest. So in case of stocks also same thing, so in trading also same thing. And here, good for us, in daily chart also, we concluded that JPM was slightly more bearish and weekly chart is also showing it is slightly more bearish. So if we had to short only one, objectively speaking, no bias, uh, clearly JPM is the better candidate. Good answer. Thank you, by the way, for participating. I think uh, that is all that I wanted to share. If you have any stock, then we could look at that. If you have no stock, then then we may uh, end today's session. Now, there is a session tomorrow. Recently, we had a Metastock APAC summit where I made a presentation. You might see the presentation in Metastock YouTube channel. Uh, and some people took up the offer to try Q Global. By the way, if you have uh, anyone interested, they can try Q Global by going to special offer. There are instructions to download it. And also in Twitter, there are instructions on how to download Q Global. If you scroll down, this APEC Online Summit Special Live Interactive class, this is the class tomorrow. If you scroll further down, how Q traders are trading profitably at the right edge of the chart. If you click, you will have instruction on how to download Q Global and run it for more than a month. This is no selling, by the way. I never mention anything related to sale in my presentation. Never, ever, ever. 
this is a complementary offer. So if there is, uh, you have time, then you may attend, but let me show the topic first. It is actually going through all the resources. So those of you who are attending the weekend session regularly, they already know everything about how to go to broad market analysis, sector industry analysis, how to use them, how to go to the community. But the new people may not know. I got some questions on how to do this or that in community. So I made some points note down and then I will have the class tomorrow. Same time that is 9 a.m. EST Sunday. 9 a.m. EST New York time Sunday. Now there is another session I am taking 22nd March Wednesday that is 6 p.m. EST that is in collaboration with Metastock and let me explain what this session will be. I mentioned about the subscription based forum. Again, those who has Q system, they don't need it. And in the subscription based forum so far, I had posted multiple trades. Some of them made profit about 70% of trades and some of them 30% or so made loss. There are, you can see 12 trades, about 10 trades completed, seven trades with profit, two trades with loss, three trades with loss. We try to keep equal profit for equal, equal reward for equal risk. So overall, they would have done well if somebody traded them in their real account or, or whatever account. Now, the session with Metastock, what it will be about is I will go through each of these 10 trades which have already closed. The last one, financial stock bearish is of course, Bank of America that hasn't closed yet, but the earlier trades like HPQ, Mankind, ANH, TASR, Square, Tesla, XBI and Jack. So some of them uh, already closed about 10. I will go through each of them and explain exactly how I decided to enter and exit. It is not different from how uh, Binoy is sharing his trades in graduates club or the way we analyzed Bank of America JPM today, but I will go through all of them without any pick and choose as, as is my style usually. So if you can, please join. It's always a pleasure to have you serious traders in my class interactive sessions. So if there is no other question, I will wait for one, two minutes to see if there is any question. If there is no question, we'll end today's session and I look forward to having you in our session next time.